living things on planet Earth must have some means for reproducing in order to produce other organisms just like themselves. Uh, there are a number of ways that these traits can be passed on from parent to offspring. Uh, and so today what we're going to talk about are some of those different modes of inheritance. We're going to talk about dominant and recessive genes. We're going to talk about morbidity genes. We're going to talk about sex influence traits, codominant traits, and then a little bit about multifactorial inheritance. The man who gave us the most information about uh, genetics and actually started the field itself was a man by the name of Gregor Mendel. In fact, for his information that he has passed on to us, he's given the honor of being the father of genetics. Mendel was quite lucky in the experiments that he carried on with garden pea plants in the fact that the traits that he chose to test were either dominant or recessive traits. We'll look at a very simple example of those dominant and recessive traits. Gregor Mendel worked with garden pea plants, and what we have discovered from his work is that any time a plant received the dominant allele from each parent, because the genes must always occur in pairs, the, the female parent passing on this trait or this gene, the male parent passing on this trait or this gene, because these genes occur in pairs, if the individual receives both dominant genes, then that individual will be considered to have the homozygous dominant genotype. Now the genotype tells us exactly the genes that are present. The phenotype of this organism then will be how those genes are expressed or what we see as a result of those genes. So the phenotype of an organism that carries both dominant traits for tallness will be tall. An organism that carries one dominant trait for tallness and one recessive trait, the recessive trait always being uh, given the lowercase letter, and the dominant trait always masking the effect of the recessive trait when we're dealing with exclusive dominant and recessive traits, then this individual would be the heterozygous genotype. Hetero meaning we have two different alleles here. We have one dominant allele, one recessive allele. The dominant allele will mask the effect of that recessive allele. The only way that we can see tallness with regard to Mendel's garden pea plants is for the individual to have both recessive traits here. We call this the homozygous recessive genotype. will be short. Now, if the dominant trait masks the recessive trait in this heterozygous condition, then these plants, or these individuals, will also be tall. So anytime the dominant trait appears, it will mask the effect of any recessive trait that might be possible. The only way the recessive trait can be expressed is if both parents have contributed that recessive trait to the offspring. This idea of dominance and recessiveness works in a number of situations in man and animals and, and in the plant world also. But we always express the genes in pairs. We will know what the dominant trait is and we'll know what the recessive trait is and these genotypes will always express that condition. If it's homozygous dominant, both genes are for the dominant trait. If it's homozygous recessive, both genes are for the recessive trait. If it's heterozygous, then we have a dominant trait and a recessive trait being expressed. Many, many features in living organisms are simply the result of one trait being dominant over another. There are also some conditions in which we will see morbidity genes or morbidity traits. 
there are about 4,000 different traits that we know of that can be the result of a morbidity gene. Things like cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is the result of the homozygous recessive condition, meaning that this recessive disorder is caused by one parent having contributed a recessive allele or gene and the other parent having contributed a recessive allele. All other individuals, if they carry the dominant trait, will be completely normal. However, the problem with mor morbidity genes is that this heterozygous condition here means that this parent potentially carries the recessive disorder and can pass that recessive disorder on to future generations. So some genes uh, are involved with uh, traits that cause disease. Uh, cystic fibrosis is one of those. Cystic fibrosis is carried on chromosome number seven. And sickle cell anemia is another trait that's carried as a morbidity gene, and it's found on chromosome number 11. There are a number of different locations that have been mapped for these morbidity genes. And if you look at uh, a karyotype of the humans that have uh, been studied for these uh, morbidity genes, there are numbers of, of traits that are responsible for disease conditions. Then there are also some times when the mode of inheritance will be influenced by a hormone in sex-influenced traits. Uh, a good example of this is baldness in human males. Uh, it is a sex-influenced trait, and it is influenced by the presence of the male hormone testosterone. Codominant traits are also another means of inheriting traits from previous parent generations. And in this case, codominant traits, probably the best example that I could give you of this is the situation with blood types in humans. In humans, a person can have either type A blood, type B blood, or type O blood. And we usually designate these in this manner. Remembering that genes always occur in pairs, one parent contributes one allele, the other parent contributes the other allele. In this case, a person would have type A blood, but also, in this case, a person would have type A blood. One parent having contributed the A antigen, and the other parent having contributed no antigen at all. A person with type B could be either of these genotypes, either having received the B antigen from one parent and the B antigen from another parent, or this individual may have received the B antigen from one parent and neither A nor B antigen, which is the designation here for O. A person who has type O blood would have received no antigen, A nor B, from either parent. And this would be the genotype of that individual. We call these codominant traits with regard to blood types because A is not dominant over B, nor is B dominant over A in this case. So the A and B antigens uh, act with regard to blood type as codominant factors as modes of inheritance. Then the last type of inheritance that we'll be looking at uh, is multifactorial inheritance, the fifth one right here. And there are a number of factors that can affect gene expression uh, when we're talking about multifactorial inheritance. Things like intelligence, things like uh, diabetes, things like uh, uh, blood pressure, uh, tallness and shortness in humans is a result of multiple factors. Uh, with regard to intelligence, when we think about it, not only are the genes important, 
but also the environmental factors or the types of cells that are involved, whether neurotransmitters are working uh, correctly or not. And sometimes even environmental factors play a very important role in multifactorial inheritance. So as organisms acquire certain genes from their parents, there can be a number of means in which they do that. They can do these uh, they can acquire these traits as simple dominant or recessive traits. Uh, some of the factors may be influenced by other things in nature that result in different types of gene expression. 